An application can be made more flexible by attaining values from the user. So an input stream is a sequence of characters that's received from an input device, such as a keyboard. As the user types in data, the data goes into the stream. So to process data in the stream, Java includes the scanner class, which you can see I've imported at the top, with methods for reading strings. Uh, for reading in strings from the keyboard, we're either using next or next line, and I'll discuss these as we type them up. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this program, Rectangle Area 2. So here we want to calculate and display the area of a rectangle based on the width and length that's entered by the user. So we need a couple of variables in order to take in the length and the width, calculate that area, and then output the information. Let's start by creating our integer values, or integer variables for length and width. We also want to be able to calculate the area of that rectangle. We can also ask the user for their name, and then that way we can give a more personalized output. So let's add in a string, and let's call it username. So we're going to ask the user for their name as well as the length and the width of their rectangle. In order to ask for input, we need to start by using the scanner. So we're going to set up a scanner called input, where we use new scanner. And to take information from the keyboard, use system.in in the brackets. This gives me a new input stream where I can take information from the user, store it in variables, and then use that information. Whenever you're asking the user for information, we want to make sure that we're giving them a descriptive output that tells them exactly what we're looking for. So let's start by asking them for their name. So system.out and then print. So we'll keep it all in the same line to start. So enter your name. Okay, in order to store their name, we start with the variable, and then we're taking information from input. For their name, we're going to use input.nextLine. Okay. What this next line portion does, it takes all the data that's being input up until uh, an end of line character. So up until they hit enter essentially. So they can enter multiple uh, multiple words separated by spaces, they can enter in one word and then hit enter um, just so that we can store it into username. Now keep in mind if they hit enter here it will just store white space. Okay? Because it's waiting for an end of line key at hitting enter enters in nothing into this username if they haven't typed anything yet. We also want to ask them for the length and width of their rectangle. So let's give them some output that tells them exactly what we're looking for. So enter the length of your rectangle. Again, we're going to use input, but this time we're going to use next. So this will look for uh, the next thing is typed in up until the first white space. So they can enter in a number, and they can hit enter, or they can, or if they had a space, it will only enter up until that white space itself. It will only store up until that value itself. Now, when you're taking input from the user it will be stored as a string, but here length is an integer. So this is one of those times where we want to convert from a string to an integer. So we're going to use our parse command. So before it was enter in the type that you want, to, want it to be, and then parse integer. This will convert what the user inputs to an integer, okay? which is what we want to store inside the variable length. Same thing, but this time for width.
again, we want to convert the string input to an integer. And then we want to calculate our area. So let's use the variable for area, multiply the length by the width. And then we can show them what our calculation resulted in. And let's also use their username. So the area of the username's rectangle is And now I'll put the final piece of information which tells them what the areas that we calculated. Let's run it. Oh, the error here um, tells us that parse integer does not exist because it should be parse int. There we go. And now it asks me for my name. So I put in Mr. Finley. Okay, so it'll read up until I hit enter and store that into the variable username. The length of my rectangle, uh, well, let's make it 16 and let's make the width of my rectangle a five. Okay, so then the area of Mr. Finley's rectangle is 80. Take a look at our input lines again. So here I have input dot next line which read everything, including the spaces, up until enter was pressed. And then next records until the next white space. So it will continuously ask until something has entered in. Okay, and it does not include spaces. So even if you hit space bar and then hit enter, it will not include that value. Okay, that value of it being nothing. So essentially it records something without the spaces. So let's say I did 10, 10, or 10, 12, 10 space 12. It's only going to read in 10. Okay, and then it asks me for the width of the rectangle, but you notice that since I entered in another number after the space, it actually skipped asking me for the next input. So the first value, the number 10, is stored in length. The second value, since there's a space and then another value, is actually stored in width. So you have to be careful when asking for these specific values. And then you notice that it actually does give me my final output line of area of Mr. Finn's rectangle is 120 because it read 10 in for length, it read 12 in for width. Okay, the first input dot next read in the first value and then with the space. It went to the next line. There was still information coming from the keyboard, which was the 12, so it read in that value. Let's take a look at input.nextLine again. So it reads everything up until the next end of line character and then store that entire value into one variable. So Mr. Finley went into one variable. An alternative would be to store each word in a multiple word input to individual variables. So such as asking for a first and last name and storing each value in separate variables. So instead of having username, maybe I want first and last name. So let's change this to last name and we'll add in another variable, string first name. Okay. And then what I can do here, instead of um, asking for everything at once, or I can ask for everything at once, but store it separately, so I could say enter your first name and last name. So being descriptive and purposeful in what I'm asking for. I want to store their first name in the first part that they enter. And I'm going to store it up until the first white space is found. 
and I'm going to store the last name into whatever comes after that white space. Okay, so this will, again, you're choosing next, or it goes up until the, the first white space. So this will actually allow me to store two pieces of information from one line. So if I run this program now, I oh, forgot to change down here. First name, I'll add a space between them. And last name, there we go. So that will now give me the proper output. So enter your first and last name. So my first name is Mr. My last name is Finley. So it's now stored Mr. with a period into first name. And then I found a white space. And then it stored Finley into last name. So again, length and width of my rectangle. There we go. So area of Mr. Finley's rectangle is 120. So you can't see in the final output that I've stored it in two variables um, because of the way that I've output it. But I have by using two separate input lines, um, but only one prompt. Try playing around with using multiple input lines, well, one after another, and see what you can get sort of as uh, some different uh, approaches to taking in input from the user.